All right, so, so what's the difference between shell elements and, 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 and so, so shell, beam elements are, are elements where I integrate the stress over the whole cross section, and by integrating the stress over the cross section, I get what I call the normal force, the shear force, and also the moment, mx and my, which give, which gives me an additional degree of freedom, which is the rotation. The rotation is an available degree of freedom for the beam element, and this rotation degree of freedom is equivalent to a force or an external force, which is the moment. In shell elements, I also do integration, but I, I do the integration along the shell thickness. By integration along the shell thickness, I introduce rotations as well. So the shell elements also have rotations as degrees of freedoms on the nodes. So when do I use shell elements and when do I use beam elements? Beam elements, of course, if I have a really long, slender, uh, three-dimensional object, such that I can I, I'm okay with the, with, the, with the assumption that plane sections remain plane and perpendicular to the neutral axis, then I can proceed and say, okay, I'm gonna use, utilize the beam approximation. If I have a structure that's very thin, it's very thin and things are not sliding on top of each other, the layers are not sliding on top of each other, such that I can assume that lines drawn on that, if I cut and look at that section, if, if, if lines stay straight after deformation, I can call this a shell element and I can apply a shell element. If those lines after deformation are no longer lines but are curved, I cannot utilize the shell approximation. But usually for thin structures, I'm able to uh, accurately, accurately utilize the shell uh, approximation and with the shell approximation I'm introducing moments and I'm introducing rotations at the degrees of freedom of the element. So, pipes are the one application where shell elements uh, are very useful. So, in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how to model a three-dimensional pipe showing that Bordon effect with internal pressure to see what happens as I apply the uh, internal pressure. So I'm going to start a new model. Now the part is a 3D part. Now there are different ways of modeling 3D parts. Now this is just a, this is not a fine, this is not finite enough. This is CAD. This is computer aided design. You can create your model, your CAD part in any software that you want. But Abacus has a preprocessor, a CAD part, where you can also with a limited, with limited capabilities, create whatever uh, 3D object you want. So, I'm going to use 3D deformable solid, uh, sorry, shell, and I'm going to use sweep because I'm going to create the whole object in one step. The first. I would like to sketch the sweep path. So the sweep path was the vertical line. And a horizontal line. And the radius was 200, I believe I chose 200 millimeter. The radius was 200. Uh oh, what did I use for the size? Okay, I'm going to go back. use a 
for larger approximate size. I want the radius to be 200 millimeters. Okay, so this is fine. This is more like it. This is the sweep path of the elbow. Done. And then enter the maximum scale for the section sketch. Uh, 1000. So from here, I'm going to create a circle with a radius of 200. Done, and here is my L. Well, the, the radius is actually too small. But let's see how this. Who? I'm going to edit this. I'm going to delete. Another one, this one. It tells you you have edited your sketch, but you have to you have to regenerate it. So I'm going to right click here, regenerate, and now this is the elbow. The radius of 100 and the radius of the elbow is 200. I'm going to mesh. size 42, let's see what that means, element type, quad, free, but you can sweep as well, let's see what sweep will do, the type of element is reduced integration S4R, the best shell element that you should use is S4R, Mesh. This is not very good. So I'm going to change my mesh to free. So the difference is sweep is sweeps sweeps the mesh across a path. Free is basically starts at one end and paves its way to the other end. Um, does the pipe have like a thickness? Yes, but that's in the section. It's like the beam. Oh, okay, yeah. It's similar to the beam. Okay. So a beam you define a cross section, a shell you also define a cross section, which is the thickness. I'm just going to make the mesh finer all right so this is the mesh again elastic 200 I like MPAs uh, just because I'm used to them and plastic isotropic 300 corresponding to a plastic strain of zero. Let's say 500 corresponding to a plastic strain of 0 0.2. Sections. That's when you, this is a shell segment, section, homogeneous. Shell, that's when you, where you define the shell thickness. So let's say the thickness of this is uh, five millimeter. 
Um, And then I'm going to assign. And this is uh, ask you the definition of your object. That that line that you defined, or that surface that you defined, where is it with respect to the shell? So I choose here the definition was in the middle. What I defined was the middle of the shell not the top, not the bottom. This, depending on, on what, uh, because it, it, this is important because um, it, it, it's also important when doing contact shells with solid elements, sometimes you want to consider the, the thickness of the shell. So if you want to consider the thickness of the shell, the contact is done a little bit further from the middle surface. Or if you want, so it really depends on, on on many things, and you should you should know what you are defining. So what I'm defining here is I'm defining the middle surface of my pipe. So this is the average radius. Is that clear? So, so was this a shell thickness, and there was when we find the section, there was a thickness of the pipe already, right? Uh, where? So when I so create the pipe, a, it, it has its own thickness already by the time you define the section, and now you have another shell thickness. Yeah, but no, but where's the first one? I never defined any one. Okay, look, you look at the pipe, there's a thickness there, right? No. No? No, it was just a line. Oh, no? So it there's was, no thickness of this pipe yet? No thickness. Okay, so the thickness will become the uh, shell thickness. The shell thickness, exactly. And you can always go to view, part display options, render shell thickness. This is new in Avix uh, 6.10, I think. Apply, and you can see the render, the shell thickness, and also you can render the beam profiles. It's also new, just to know if you, because sometimes you, you're using the wrong units. You choose thickness to be 5 when you're using meters. And so it's good to know how things are. So you'll see this in, in, view, in view, part display options or assembly display options, whether you're in assembly or in part. Render shell thickness. And now you can see the thickness. And you can see that where, where, where the shell is, where our pipe is, it's in the middle surface of the shell. Now the analysis is done on this surface. Okay. So again, I'll create a step. I think I've done everything here. Static, static general, non-linearity geometry, incrementation one. I'm going to go point 0.1 and point 0.1 alright I have to bring it to the assembly I'm going to apply load the sorry boundary condition of fixed I'm going to fix both ends I left the rotation. Remember, here the rotation is active. The rotation in shell elements is active, but I just left the rotations. The loads now in 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 in, in pipes, the stress, the circumferential stress is equal to P R over T. So P R over T. So that the radius was 100, the thickness was 5, and I want this P R over T to be equal to the 300. 
So 300 is equal to PR over T. So this is equal to this multiplied by the thickness divided by R. So the pressure is about 15 uh, MPa. That will cause this to just yield. Just yield. I need to apply 15. And let's see what will happen to the elbow. So I'm going to apply load, pressure on the three surfaces. And uh, because this is a shell surface, Alex will ask, where do you want to apply the, 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 the load? On the purple or on the brown surface? And sometimes, it depends on how you define the surfaces, one of them could be flipped. So you might want to apply the load on each portion on its own. So, so for example, if the elbow, the outside is, purple, if is brown and the inside is purple, you might want to just apply the load on, on this portion first, and then this other portion first, and then this middle portion. So I'm applying, choose a side for the shell or internal faces. It's we're applying on the brown. And the magnitude, we said 15 MP. Create a job. Let's call it two, and everything else is the same. Submit, and you'll see here input file first, and then the data file, the message file, ODB file, status file. Even. Status file. If we've reached the status file, that means we've passed the initial stage, and in the status file. It's even it's already completed. So I was able to apply point one, and it usually if, if I have not specified a maximum, this would have been point one, point one, point two, point three would have increased. But because I specified the maximum increment, it stayed at point one. Results. You can you can see here. how the, 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 the load is trying to, or the elbow is trying to open up. And let's look at the bomb of stress. That's, this is auto. And you can see the bomb of stress is maximum here. Now this is the shell element. The stresses in the shell element, because it's the shell element, the, stre the, the stress at the bottom is different from the stresses at the, at the top. The stress vary along the thick, similar to a beam. The stress at the bottom is different from the stress at the top. So you need to know, when you're dealing with shells and beams, where is that output? And if you go results uh, field output, there is here section points. <coughs> And it tells you which location you're actually outputting that stress. And I would, I would usually, if you're dealing with shell or beam, you're only interested in the maximum or the minimum. So I'm going to put the envelope. Uh, now it's reduced integration. I'm going to put the envelope because the, the maximum bomb mesa stress, the bomb stress is always positive. So I'm only interested in the maximum. So envelope is fine. The maximum absolute value. Apply, okay, and so you can see the maximum of mesa stress throughout the shell elements, and I have not used any. Now, of course, if you're going to write a report to a client, you might want to add this 75%, just so that it looks very nice. And you, it appears as if you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, don't give your client something with a jagged stress. <laughs> now let's, um, let's just apply things in, in multiple steps. This is something we haven't done. 
So I'm going to apply two steps. In the first step, I'm going to apply boundary condition only here. So this is my first step, and in the second step, so I'm going to create another step. Everything is the same, but this I'll make it 0.1 as well. And the maximum is 1, I don't mind if it increases. And in the second step, I'm going to create another boundary condition, where I'm going to take this edge. Are you still on step 1? Yes, thank you. So step two. The load is still the same. I will not change the load. The boundary condition will be still the same. But I'm going to add another one. Where I'm going to move this back to zero. Now, because it's it's a nonlinear, this is a nonlinear response, plastic response. These two um, paths are not the same. You're not going to get the same final results. So I'm going to submit this. Status file. Even the first step is not working. So let's see what's happening. So I couldn't even. Uh, continue the analysis because of the because of that board, you see what happened with the board on effect as you increase the pressure this elbow is opening up and perhaps the stresses have reached yields yes this is true. the stresses have reached yield on a, in a very high area and so I couldn't even finish step one so step one was not even finished I could only apply 0 0.14 of the of the actual load, so I'm just going to go back and apply actually 0, uh, 10 percent of that load. Instead of 15, I'm going to apply 1.5. Oh no! So 1.5. 1.5 in the first step, and 1.5 in the second step. Run it. The first step was completed, and you can see here that in the second step it does it on its own. Point one, point one worked really well, so moves increases the step increment to 0 0.15, 0 0.25 to 5, and so on. And the last one, because the maximum is 1, it just applies what is left. Results. So let's animate time history. You can see that as you apply the load, and then apply the, the displacement. And you can animate as well here the bond of stress. And these are the nice videos you can export or save as. And you can 
for your final uh, presentation or for your whatever conference or anything where you're presenting in fi uh, final damage analysis, it would be good to show a video uh, of what you're actually doing. And you can, uh, when, you, when you save as, you can decrease the speed. And so you can play around with anything that you want. And you can also set the limits as you're plotting for a video, for example, because when, when I'm playing this, here the limits are, are, are constant. You can have them. Um, I think you should, you should be able to have them changing throughout the video as well. But this is better, that they're constant throughout the video so that you see the development of the stresses throughout the loading steps that you're doing. Alright, so this is it for the uh, finite dynamic analysis in plasticity. Um, from here you can have lots of fun modeling whatever you guys want to do. Uh, it's, it's really, plasticity is very powerful in doing a lot of, uh, especially metal plasticity, because it converges uh, because the, the, the beauty of, or, or why it works, plasticity is because we can apply a really large plastic strain. The, the material is very ductile. Because the material is very ductile, I can reach really high deformations without failure, and the material is still, the stress is still increasing. When you try to do this with concrete or with any other uh, material, you don't get the same response. You don't get large deformations and the, and the things snap, and you don't really achieve convergence, that's why I don't like playing a lot with concrete or any uh, any, uh, uh, duct, uh, any brittle materials. The other thing that you can also play around with, which we will play around with at the end of the, in the last assignment, is contact and a large uh, deformation elasticity. When you have an object that deforms, that you can apply very large deformations, but it's elastic. So in your last assignment, just to give you uh, a heads up on what to expect, I mean, you already have it, but let's see. In your last assignment, what you're going to be asked to do is create a hyperelastic material, ball of hyperelastic materials, any dimensions, and two rigid cylinders and you're going to be asked to apply pressure on this ball until it actually passes through those two cylinders. So it's a really fun thing to do and especially th th now this if you're able to model this then you're able you, you've done a lot of things because for this particular problem you have large deformations you have contact and you also have an instability because once this ball starts passing through the load is actually decreasing because you don't, at the beginning you need a lot of load to push but at, as, the load, as the ball goes through, the load decreases alright, so we'll see you next week don't forget that you get an extra hour of sleep next week the change of the hours